try to make learning enjoyable. Who wants to learn about Abhi Talib last time? Son of Abhi Talib. His nickname? Abhi Talib. You know the story, right? Rasulullah found him sleeping on the bridge, outside of the bridge or something. Yeah, in the bridge. Yeah. And then someone spoke to him and said, I'd like to see him in it. Okay. I didn't know how he liked the name, so he kept the name of him. So I'll call him Abu Turab because he was a lover. He had an argument with his wife. His wife, who? Who's his wife? What else he did last time? From last time, we reviewed. He killed Amr bin Abdul. Amr bin Abdul Wood, yes. boogeyman of Quraysh. Everybody scared him, right? Yes. What else? And he also Khalifa. Remember the fourth Khalifa in Islam. What's the third? Who's the third? Who was the third? One, second, third, fourth. First one was what? Bakar. Abu Bakar. Omar. Uthman. Ali bin Abi Talib. Remember? What else? If you remember. One. Something different. We gotta read. You gotta read. You guys take notes. You don't have to read. I mean, loud. So everybody can understand and listen. Everybody take turn. Each one of you have to read. To so make sure you understand what you read. Make sure you out loud. Right? Can you read it out loud? It's not only reading for yourself. You want me to give you an example? Hmm? You don't have to read, right? Out loud. We're still talking about Ali bin Abi Talib. Hey, listen up. The Jews from all around the United States. From all agreements they had made with the Muslims, they supported the pagans and plotted to kill the prophet and weaken the Muslims. They did not like the way Islam was spreading in Arabia. They gathered inside a fortified city called Hubbar uh, near Armenia and began preparations to attack the Muslims. The prophet and his companions surrounded Khadibar. Several Muslims. Uh, uh, several Muslim leaders tried to conquer the city, but no, no one of them came back with victory. On the last day, the prophet said, Tomorrow and I will give the banner leadership to a man whom Allah and his prophet love. All senior companions of the prophet wished to be the leader. However, the prophet gave the banner to Adi. He led the army to the fortress and challenged their leader named Murhab. In no time, he killed Murhab, opened the gate of the Okay. Look. You hear what he's saying? They plan to kill Muhammad. No, um, this is uh, in the battle of Haibar. You know, Haibar is one of the fortress, Jewish fortress. The story about the war, the battle, took place at that time. Haibar. In the Haibar, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, listen. He trying to give the banner whom Allah and His Messenger love, which is everyone. Basically, basically, everyone loved Rasulullah, everyone loved Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time, right? But He gives to specific person, 
and all Sahaba wish, especially Umar bin Khattab, Umar bin Khattab, very strong, right? He wish that he's the one who get banner. He wish that he get the one who have privilege to appointed by Rasulullah sallallahu that time. So guess what? Ali bin Abi Talib given better. But Ali bin Abi Talib wasn't there. He was sick. His eyes were red. He was sick. And Rasulullah called him, make dua, and uh, you know, the spirit of Rasulullah is very, you know, can, can cure. This is one of the, one of the miracle of Rasulullah. So he, he gave him cure, he made dua, and Ali bin Abi Talib was cured. And he get the banner, he get the privilege of the banner. And also, there's another duel between him and Mirhab. Mirhab also is a strong man in Quraysh, just like uh, Amir bin Abdul Wood. Mirhab, very strong and tall. Nobody dare to challenge him, Ali bin Abi Talib challenged him, you know? You know about Khabib last night? Yes, yeah. You watched that? Yes. Yeah. It is a, aside from Ali bin Abi Talib's story, right? He was very humble man though. You know why? He said Alhamdulillah at first. Alhamdulillah. All praise go to Allah, not to him. The power, the technique, it's not, it's not him. It's Allah, right? And he also introduced his brothers, I think Abu Bakr, Ali, and his dad. His dad, his dad, he coach, and also he mentioned about Abu Bakr and uh, other Sahaba name, you know? His dad's name is Abdul Manaf. Abdul Manaf? Yeah, Abdul Manaf? Abdul Manaf. Abdul Manaf, Manaf actually, it's not, it's, not, it's not a good name. Oh, really? Because Abdul, I don't know, but I don't know, but I need to check it. But Abdul has to be a slave. A slave, right? Associated with the name of Allah, like Abdullah, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Malik, what else? Abdul Rahim, right? That's why, uh, that's why Abu Bakr, Abu Bakr, an army of 10,000 Muslims marched towards Bakr. Ali was a commander of one of the wings of the army. He entered the city peacefully and destroyed the stone idols that were worshipped by the people of Mecca. No one in Mecca was harmed by the Muslim army. In the ninth year after the, the, the title, dear to the Prophet than anyone else. Okay. Three. Three. Dear to the Prophet so more so long than anybody else. In the ninth. If you can like talk like me louder, a little bit louder, so everybody can listen. In the ninth year of the immigration to um, Medina, the Prophet um, led an army to Tabuk to the northern borders of Albia to, uh, to deter the Romans to a conspiracy to destroy the Islamic he left early and behind as the ruler of Al Medina, while after Al Medina was not satisfied with this mission, he wanted to, to join the army. He thought that leaving him behind would be a shame to him. Okay, good. See, Ali was so brave, right? Look, you don't want to be. What he saying? Do you know what he said, right? What he read? He thought that leaving him behind would be a shame to him. He wanna be in the battle, include in the battle. And the prophet told him, "Do you not like to be to me like Harun was to Musa alayhi salam?" You know what that means? They mean like of Ali. Just like Moses, or like Harun, to the Prophet Moses. You know Harun? His brother. You know Harun to the Prophet Moses? That's his brother. Anybody know? The Prophet Moses accompanied by Harun, right? To face Pharaoh. Pharaoh. 
Remember? So that's how the Rasulah the found him in this position. Okay, your turn. Do you not like Lada, Lada. To, Do you not like to be like Harun but to Musa? Ali was satisfied with the mission and the condition given to him by the Prophet. Uh, the proclamation of the return from Tabu, the Prophet is sent the book to Makkah to perform pilgrimage under the leadership of Abu Bakr. After the departure of the Muslims to Makkah, the Prophet sent Ali to Makkah to read the proclamation. No idolater shall, uh, after this year, perform pilgrimage. No one shall run uh, around the Kaaba naked who was in treaty with the Prophet. It shall continue binding till its end for the rest four months are allowed every man to return to his territory after which were all just no obligation on the Prophet except towards those people with whom treaties have been made. Okay, well. In the tenth after uh, migration, the Prophet sent Ali to preach Islam to the Prophet, uh, to the people of Yemen. He did the job very successfully to the extent that the whole Hamdan tribe accepted Islam, the Prophet uh, praised him for the success he achieved in Yemen. Okay, you heard that right? He was a preacher too. Then all the Sahaba was a preacher, right? No, after the Prophet, then Nabi Allah, there is no other Prophet after Prophet Muhammad So we have job in this world, in America, in everywhere, to carry a good character, right? To carry the message of Islam, to follow the footsteps of Rasulullah and Sahaba. Right? Why? Why? We want to be in Jannah, right? All of us want to be in Jannah. Carry the message through our good characters, learning, and anything else. And continue with this one. Okay. Immediately after the Prophet passed away, love it, love it. immediately after the Prophet passed away, the Muslims elected Abu Bakr as Khalid. Ali helped the Khalid in defending the Islamic State, especially when the apostates in the Arabian Peninsula threatened to crumble the state. After Abu Bakr's death, Omar took over rule upon the recommendation of Abu Bakr. Ali was appointed as judge. As a judge, Omar referred difficult cases to him and took him as his advisor. Before he passed away, Omar selected six persons, who among Ali to select one of them as Khalid. The majority preferred Uthman to Ali. During Uthman's rule, Ali continued his efforts to strengthen the Islamic State. He kept aside Uthman as an advisor. He did his best to make the Islamic State spread over new lands. Following the murder of Uthman, the senior companions insisted that Ali take over. In the beginning, he did not accept the mission. However, both Al-Zubair and Talha urged him to accept the position and the fourth Khalif of Islam. They wanted a strong man to stop the rebels and restore order to the state. The conditions of the state were very bad at that time. The people who revolted against Qayyad Uthman took hold of al Madinah and even led the public prayers. The people of the city gave allegiance to the Khalif. However, several regional rulers refused to pledge loyalty to him. They did not deny Ali's ability to lead and his many virtues. However, they felt that he should have taken a firmer stance against Uthman's murders. Ali was confronted with a huge number of problems. The rebels tumbled the life of the society. They were very strong and liked to control the Khalif and the people. However, Ali wanted to stop them. They requested him to dismiss the rulers who were relatives to Uthman. Ali knew that these rulers were not good. He immediately ordered them to give up their position. The rulers of some provinces also refused to listen to him and held fast their position. Some rulers took the case of Uthman's murder as an excuse to revolt against the Khalif. They requested the Khalif to kill the people who killed Uthman. They demanded the killing of the murderers, and in their forcefulness, they created problems for the new Khalif. The situation was very bad for him. He did not like to shed blood, and at the same time, wanted to stop the corruption of the rulers. He asked Muawiyah to pledge loyalty to him, but Muawiyah refused to listen to him. 
Bawi asked Ali to detain the rebels and kill them for killing this man. He resisted Ali's control. Unfortunately, the two companions could not reach a settlement for a long time. Instead of directing the efforts of the government to spread Islam, all resources were being used for suppressing troubles here and there. Finally, both Ali and Muawiyah agreed to restore, resort to arbitration instead of fighting. They were both keen to keep the Muslim nation strong and unified. Ali selected Abu Musa al-Ash'ari as his arbitrator, and Muawiyah selected Amr bin al You know what arbitrator means? Arbitrator? No. You don't have disagreements, and somebody has to be in the middle, right? Muawiyah selected Amr bin al-As as his arbitrator. Amr deceived Abu, al Abu Musa al-Ash'ari when both arbitrators agreed to dismiss both Muawiyah and Ali and to leave it to the nation to select a ruler. Abu Musa came out to the people and declared that he dismissed Ali. However, Amr told the people that he supported Muawiyah. Hence, settlement was not achieved and the troubles for the Alif continued. In addition to these troubles, some of Ali's supporters revolted against him because he accepted arbitration. They were fanatics. They also claimed that Ali had become a disbeliever when he accepted arbitration. The Khawarij killed anyone who supported Ali's point of view. Ali did his best to bring them back to the fold of Islam peacefully but without success. Hence, he had no choice but to fight them and stop their aggression against people. As a result of these troubles, Three of the dissidents agreed to kill Ali, Muawiyah, and Amr. Each one of them prepared himself well for the evil job. One named Abdurrahman bin Bolajim, whom Ali was very kind to during past days, came to the mosque and hid in it. He knew that Ali would come to Fajr prayer. As Ali started performing prayer, the man came forward and stabbed him several times with the dagger. The people behind him caught the murderer and carried Ali home. Three days later, Ali passed away, leaving the nation in the eye of the storm. Ali's rule continued for four years and nine months. The majority of historians confirm that he died at the age of 63. His sons, Al-Hassan and Al-Hussein, married him. The whole nation was disturbed by the death of this great companion of the Prophet. Hence, the period of Ali's rule was full of troubles for him and for the Muslims in general. During this period, no new lands were added to the Islamic State. The Khalif was busy trying to bring order to the state itself. The differences among the Muslims killed any chance of conquest. Following Ali's death, Muawiyah restored order to the state and became the Khalif. Kind of misbehaving, kind of tremble, 
stuff. And then Rasulullah saw Uhud come down, Uhud, on top of you there's a prophet, on top of you there's Siddiq Lane, on top of you there's a Shaheed. Even before they, they dead, before they pass away, Rasulullah saw already saw come down Uhud. So it's already prophecy which is fulfilled in the time. So I mean I'm talking about two sons, right? Who? Hassan Hussein. Hassan and Hussein. And then who's this? Abdurrahman bin Mujan. Who named this beside him? Who's this? This beautiful name, mashallah. Beautiful name. Abdurrahman bin Mujan. I don't know. This is the son of Mujan. Mujan. He is Khawarij. He's the one who killed Ali. The one who killed Ali. Khawarij. You know Khawarij means? Khawarij? Murderer. Hmm? Murderer. Murderer. Khawarij. He's a Muslim also. But you know they behave like um, uh, too harsh, too rough to the other Muslim. They think that the other Muslim is kafir, disbeliever. If they don't they, they if they don't do what they think is right for them. That's why in Islam you cannot you have to be in the middle. Ummatan wasatan, right? In the middle. Like when dua from Bana Atina fit dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina you know what that means? Like to Oh Allah give me what? Rabbana Atina. Uh, I want what? Some good. I want good love in dunya and the yeah, also in the akhirah. So it's in the middle. Not so not too extreme. This oil is too extreme. And there's another one that too easy to take religion. It means they they can they will become liberal. Because they think oh, it's easy, so they don't salah, they don't do anything else. They just believe, but they don't do anything. They don't do what the Prophet, the Islam, taught them to do. So we want to be in the middle, ummat and wasata. Just we, if we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Sahaba, then we, then we will be the right path. That's what we learn about, right? <coughs> and Sahaba. This is the correct Islam. You will come across Shia, which is say a different thing, which is say Aisha. Aisha. The cursing Aisha is in hellfire or on the top. They don't like it. What? What? It's a crook of mine. Why? Because they're trying to destroy Islam from inside. You see, we learn about Sahaba. We learn how, how to respect them because they carry the message of Islam and pass down to us. You know, after Sahaba is Tabi'in. The Tabi'in, the generation after Sahaba. After Tabi'in, Tabi'un Tabi'in. The one who learned from Tabi'in. And then after that, Ulama, the Shaykh, the Shaykh, up till now. Imam, teach you guys Islam, right? And you have to pass down also to your generation. It's like I told y'all, right? Like Habib name, uh, the Habib father name, the brothers like Abu Bakr. That's a strong name, mashallah. Abu Bakr, what else? I don't know about Abdul Manan. Just thinking again. Yeah, I think I, I heard it. I didn't really hear him, but he said that Ab Abdul something, right? Yeah, yeah. maybe Abdul something. Yep. Do you remember? When you get married, you have to... Also, one of his brother's name is Islam. Islam, Islam. yeah. Something related yeah. to Islam. Islam. You know one Imam in Al-Ara named Muhammad Islam. <coughs> you know, back in the day, Quraysh, they don't like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi right? They're trying to say a lot of allegations toward Rasulullah. They say Rasulullah what? A liar. What else? What else? Magician. All that name, all that bad name. But guess what? Allah make them say that, but 
His name, what's the meaning? What Muhammad name means? The praise one. So it doesn't, it's contradiction. The praise one, the praise one is magician. The praise one is a liar. It doesn't make any sense, right? The praise, the praise, Muhammad is a liar. What? The praise one is a liar. What? It doesn't, it's contradict what they say. Okay, so um, how many minutes I got left? Virtues. Virtues. Yes, well, I live in Abu Okay, then this. You skip that? No. Loud, loud, loud. Ali is a simple one. Virtues of Ali bin Abi Dalit. Ali lived a simple life till the age of 25 or 26. He had lived with the Prophet. And he tried to imitate him in every way. His household was so simple that it consisted of few items. He gave his guests dinners of his wedding day only by selling his armor. Fatima was doing all of her housework and Ali was helping her now and then. He was earning his life by doing manual work, like drawing water for irrigation. There were many days in his life when he went without the other. When he became a Khalifa, he did not change. Like maybe voice time, like loud. His simple way of life. He continued putting on the most good ordinary clothes and talking the simplest possible. All that he used to take was a cup of milk, a piece of barley bread, and some vegetables. He always told his companions that a Khalifa Khalif was only entitled to two dishes, one for him and one for his family, and the other for the poor. Okay. You heard that? Ali, you have to it, live a simple life. Very humble. You know, as a Khalid, like leader nowadays, they can live like this life, right? They can have a brand new car, brand car. What else? What else? They can have like this life. They can go anywhere they want. It can be a luxurious house. Mention and work. stuff, but I mean, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. Didn't use that. <laughs> this way, you should learn, right? From I mean, I'm sorry. Don't talk to one another. Later, you have time. And what else did you learn from last time? Remember last time you learned something about when Fatima asking or so about because they were poor. They even make a bread with their own hand. The poor, so he, she came to Rasulullah so some asking. She came to his father asking, Rasulullah, give me what? Servant. Servant. You remember that and then, story? And then he said, uh, if you say, Alhamdulillah, SubhanAllah, Allah, 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 34 times for Allah, 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 Allah. Right. Every day before you sleep, it's better than the That's it. Yes, sir. It's better than a servant, right? We can use that too, though. Every night before we go to bed, 34 times, Allah Akbar, 33 times, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, 33 times. What does that do? Hmm? What does that do? This is from Rasulullah. Before you sleep, before you go to bed, read that. It's better. Even a servant. You know, servant helping you do this, do that, do this. There's a lot of reward for that. Okay? All right, any question? Please, any question so far? If you don't ask questions, that means two things. Either you're sleepy or you don't understand at all, or I asked a question. you know everything. I asked a question. Anybody? All right, see you next time, Shalom, next Shalom. class. Hey, do you have any suggestion for the class? For my class, Sahaba, or any other class? Say it if you have any suggestion to uh, motivate you guys to learn.
Okay. I guess that's all right. That's all for class today. So I'll meet again next time. So I can.